Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. If this is your first time, welcome. This podcast is focused on the joys and adventures of adulting. Most of the time I am sharing my experiences and or discussing various topics with friends and some experts from time to time. Um, But today I am happy to share that I have joining me my good, good friend that I can literally say we go back since grade school, Chanel. So welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How you doing? I am doing just fine, just fine. Um, Just getting in from a long weekend in Delaware. So happy to be here. Slower, lower, Delaware. No, let me stop. But yes, <laughs> I guess that's one of my hometowns. Oh, yes. One yes. of mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so before we get into today's topic, I like to start each episode with something that I'm grateful for. And with you being a guest, I will let you go first. Something or someone that you're grateful for. I am grateful that it is finally spring. I am an outdoors person for sure. So I'm looking forward to all these outdoorsy things that are on my bucket list for. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing about them and the pictures that come because you take great pictures and videos. Um, I am grateful. I am also grateful for spring and that it's actually starting to feel like it is spring. Um, but I'm honestly, I'm grateful that you were here with me virtually um for the podcast just because I feel like I haven't seen you in forever um because of the situation the situation um or the cootie thing cootie times as I heard somebody (laughs) say earlier um but yeah so I'm happy I'm happy to see your face and to talk to you um and then also just to have you on the podcast because it's been something that I've been talking about and we've kind of been talking about on the side for, sure. for a while now. For sure. Um, so with that being said, just kind of getting into the topic. Um, as I mentioned, Chanel and I go back, I want to, was it eighth grade? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I say Delaware is one of my hometowns because that is where I did most of middle, I did, yeah, seventh grade through high school. Um, and so met Chanel in middle school at Post Weight. I want to say we had at least a couple of classes together. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but for as long as I can remember, you have been someone who always wanted to help people. You were like the first person who told me what a nurse anesthetist. And I still can't really say the word, but <laughs> anesthetist. Like, yes, you said yes. So it's like you wanted to, you always wanted to help. And I remember, and this is a side note. You, Chanel was trying to get me to go to California for school. Yeah. <laughs> like we were going to USC and or Stanford. Something like that. Yeah, it was just, she was like, yes, let's go. And I was considering it, but then I was like, wait, I don't know anybody in California. You have family. <laughs> um, and then it ended up, we ended up going, we still went to college together. We were at right. Temple together. So right. like I said, literally since what, 12, 13. Yeah. So into we were, our, I would say our actual, adult years. Yeah, we were actually neighbors after that too. Oh yeah, in Baltimore. So Chanel campaigned for <laughs> campaign for me in terms of college, yeah. in terms of where to go. Ended up going to college together. Yes. Then had a low key campaign going for a while to get me to move to Maryland, right? Specifically Baltimore. And then I came. And it worked out. We, we were in the yeah. same hood for a little while. And yes. Yeah. So you're a very special person to me. Um, we've been friends for, I think, more than 20 years. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we, we're getting into the adult adult years now. <laughs> so, yes. But um, like I said, so very special, very dear to me. Um, but like I said, as, as long as I've known you, just always very creative, very much, you know, wanting to help people. And so there are a variety of reasons that I wanted to have you on, but I guess we'll 
trying to find a way to pull it all together. But um, if you would just kind of share just a little bit about your story and then we'll get down into the nitty gritty. Sounds good. Sounds good. So do we take it back to eighth grade or <laughs> kind of just, all right, we'll start in high school. Okay. <laughs> um, I am a person of, I wouldn't say too many interests. I have a few interests that I'm very passionate about. Um, so like she said, uh, being of service to people has always been um, close to my heart. Uh, wherever I can help, that's where I want to be. Um, when I was in high school, I found that I was really attracted to the arts and creativity, but also to um, the health professions, helping people in that way too. Um, I found one direction to be easier than the other. So that's <laughs> what I pursued in, in college. Um, I went the creative route, never ended up working in I think they say a lot of people, you know, you go to school for something and you end up somewhere totally different. Um, so we went to Temple. I got my degree in advertising. Advertising is not something that I went into after graduating, um, but nonetheless found a career in um, civil rights that, you know, was pretty meaningful. Um, it was a contractor position, meaning whatever contract I was on, I had to kind of adapt myself and do that role. So starting out, it was great um, interacting with small businesses, helping them to get certified. Um, towards the end, I was moving towards more numbery type positions, payroll, stuff like that, which really didn't speak to me. Um, so I think I was about 29 when I decided um, I can't do this. Like the pay is great, but um, it's not something that really speaks to my soul. Um, when I thought about what really made an impact for me, it was, um, you know, the health professions. Like I said, I've always had a big interest in science and biology, stuff like that. And of course, being of service to other people. So 29, I made a big leap and decided to take some prereqs for nursing. Um, ended up uh, quitting my job and going you know, full steam ahead to, to nursing at the ripe young age of 30. So, yes. Um, <laughs> so that was <laughs> definitely a, a huge like leap of faith, but I felt like it was something that had to be done in order to preserve my happiness. And I will say is one of the best decisions that I made. Yeah, no, I, you said it, and I literally went right back to when you were telling me, like, yeah, I'm taking classes, because my family friends, they always joke that I'm always in school, but I'll be like, Chanel is low-key low, low never left school either, because she just was, I was like, you were doing yours under the radar, right? Because, but it's like, I always remember even before that, before you decided to take those specific prerequisites, but just, you would always be, oh, I'm taking this class here or this, that, there. And it's like, this is true. I, I skipped over that whole part, but um, I always felt like, you know, there was something greater for me. So I like tested the waters with, you know, psychology and even computer science <laughs> at one point before, you know, finding my footing where I was supposed to be in my heart, which is um, nursing. Okay. Yes. You already know this, but for you all listening, she's also my nurse and <laughs> um, my do will be my doula and or birth coach, you know, figures, haven't figured all those titles out, but when, when we get to that point, when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. Mm -hmm. But um like I said, I remember when we had that conversation of like, I'm thinking about it. I don't know, but no, I'm going to do it. And I remember like, she's really about to like <laughs> legit switch everything. And I was just like amazed. I had, and, you know, admired that and watching you go through that um, was just really amazing. And I also remember... I don't know if it was before or during um, kind of your transition to going back to when you decided to become a nurse 
and start that process. Um, but, and this is kind of getting into kind of the thing wanted to talk with you about, but you were, I don't remember how it came up, but we ended up having a conversation about investing and learning about the stock market and in just investing in general and how important it is and how much they're just all of the things that you learned. And so I remember then thinking, this is great. I don't really know what she's talking about. I want to, but mm, I don't know. Uh, but since then, you have definitely like, you have gone all the way up with it, uh, which I'm still learning from you as well as, you know, doing my own independent research slowly. Right. But just... I guess, tell us a little bit about how you got into investing Mm -hmm. and why you do, you know, like why you do it. Right, right, right. So um, I think everyone kind of moves at their own pace and um, in time, like you'll find out what method works for you, like your own plan. For me, and I think a lot of millennials, um, we during our coming of age, experienced a huge recession in 2008 with the housing market crash and stock market crash. (laughs) So it was like, you know, coming into adulthood, um, like you become very wary of these these things. The way I look at it now is like it's a huge discount. Yes, it's unfortunate that, you know, these circumstances happen, but you'll see Um, kind of some cyclical cycles that occur in both real estate and um, the stock market. Um, So for me, while I was working, let's say when I was having my civil rights job, when I was in that position, um, my manager, he took a liking to me. So we would talk often about like just random things. He was like really big into investing in the stock market. And very like straight laced guy, like, you know, same tie and, you know, crisp white (laughs) shirt and pants, like every day, he wasn't flashy or anything, but he made a lot of money in the stock market. So he, he was like tireless, relentless with, um, trying to kind of get me on board, you know, at a young age in my early Mm -hmm. twenties to start investing at a young age. And, um, and really, I'm so grateful that I had that relationship with him um, when I finally, you know, started dipping my toes into stocks. Um, it really worked out for me. Um, I was able to basically fund my uh, living expenses when I was in nursing school, all from, you know, some investments that I had started in my, <laughs> in my early 20s. So the earlier that you can start, um, the better. And so basically he kind of like instilled um, some basic fundamentals, meaning um, uh, like I said, the stock market, for instance, is, you know, it goes up, it goes down. It's the nature of the stock market. Basically you don't lose until you sell. Um, So the best thing that you can do is take advantage of, um, the stock market when it's, you know, going down, when everyone's going crazy, he was like, that's when you need to keep your head, keep a cool head. And that's when you really need to like start buying because it's going to come back. Historically speaking, you know, what goes down goes up. So <laughs> that that is true. Yeah. Um, and we've, I would say just from a, I guess, watching from a distance, I've seen that. Um, and even with my little limited investing I've been doing, watching that go up and down, um, it's been interesting watching, like, I, I know I shared with you before, like one that I bought initially, it was like two, three dollars, like $2. And then it shot up to like 25. It has since come back down, not to, so, and I didn't invest a whole lot because I was using Robinhood, but which... I'm kind of side eyeing them right now. Right. Um, but even with that, just watching, I remember like, oh, shoot. But then because and I had thought about selling, but it was like I also actually 
it's one that I was like, I want to own. And so it has definitely fluctuated. And this is just since I want to say June of last year. So that's what six, I guess, eight months now of watching it go back and forth. And part of me is like, oh, if I had like invested some money, money in here, I could really could have had a real big couple and said I mean which a couple hundred is nice because that's not right. how much I spent right. but it's just like okay but I this was my like last year it was okay I've been talking about it I want to do it so yeah I don't have a whole lot of you know extra to play with uh-huh. but I'll use this to get comfortable like you said with the staying the course of exactly. not get panicking and worrying when it goes down and everybody else is going exactly. crazy. Right. Um, and so that has been helpful for me uh, to where now I'm not on it every day like I was initially, but I still, I read, you know, my alerts. I look at the different things, right. to decide, oh, well, you know what? We're just going to let it rock and see what happens. I also want to see how much can it can we grow <laughs> right, right. before uh, making any big moves. But I guess I get the, you know, obviously the financial reason, like you said, you were from starting younger, you were able to fund, you know, essentially go back to school right. and not be concerned about how am I going to live my day to day, which <laughs> been there, done that, <laughs> know that life all too well, you know, yeah. have, having lived off of a refund check when I was in law school um, and that whole process. Um, So like, I get that reason like that, that alone is enough. And I feel like if you're listening, that should be a reason like, Hey, go ahead and get started. But I guess aside from the, the financial or monetary kind of instant gain, why do you do it? Um, I want to be good when I grow up (laughs) for real, for real. Um, I don't think that, not not saying there's anything wrong with having a nine to five, but I know the way that I want to live my life as, you know, the years progress and having that freedom to kind of like pull back from the nine to five was so empowering um, that it's inspired me even more. I know that my dollar is depreciating um, every year. With inflation, I'm not able to buy as much with my dollar in 2021 as I was in 2020. And it might right. be accelerated just based on, you know, stimulus and kind of what's going on in our economy right now. Mm-hmm. So as a way to protect my dollar, um, I got into investing. And all you really have to do is be, what, 3%? That's inflation, I think, to on, you know typically speaking. Mm-hmm. It might be accelerated now, like I said, due to the economy. But um, basically, yeah, just protecting the dollar, protecting my future. And I would like to definitely leave something for the next generation. Um, you and I have talked, you know, prior to this conversation about right. um, historic racism, institutionalized racism, um, and how it's held people of color, people like you and me, Mm -hmm. I would tell this back. Um, Talking recently with my parents, um, we were discussing ways in which we should be wealthy for all intents and purposes, but because of the color of our skin, we've kind of been excluded from some things. Um, Like I mentioned to you before, my mother, her family um, has land in Texas that sits on top of an oil well. Mm. Um, so they went to, to court once they discovered it to kind of claim that, stake a claim to this, this well. Um, the Texas court uh, sided with them saying that this okay. is your, this is your property, whatever, whatever. Um, their neighbor took it to court outside of the state and they lost. <laughs> they said that because this well runs through your neighbor's property that it doesn't belong to you. So, <clears throat> right. <laughs> so there's that. My like, my, wait, hold up. So we co- right. we co-own it, or the the neighbor got it. The all? neighbor owns it. <laughs> <laughs> On my dad's side, my dad is from Maryland, um, and he was telling me about um, an uncle of his or great uncle 
who owned land where the, the mall in Annapolis is located, but mm -hmm. because he died and he didn't have a will that the state took over that land and gave his relatives each like $20 or something like that. So and this isn't even talking about redlining. This isn't right. talking about like, you know, Just not actually. giving black people loans and, you know, stuff like that. It's just, they don't want us to win. Well, historically speaking. So girl, that's a word right there. But, <laughs> and you, like you said, that's not even the things that were like over that we know about, but this is a situation yeah. where they own the land. Like yeah. there's no question about yeah. it. Like we own it. This is my property, but then using the legal system. Right. Right. Quote so. unquote justice so just um, like you said with like serving other people it is big for me that's why i talk your ear off about it all the time it's big for me that um not only people in my circle but i want black people i want people of color to win um they've taken so much from us but you know we have the means especially with the stock market that doesn't discriminate against anybody for any reason it's a great way to to build wealth if you're able to um put aside some money for years like you said it's not something that you're gonna throw in and take out just because you saw it you know go up unless you want to play taxes on that which can be yeah ridiculous. No. So. that's a whole other so speaking of that like you said the stock market doesn't discriminate um when you said that it made me think of the recent thing with was at GameStop and yeah. all of the different hedge fund owners. It was, right. from my understanding of it, because I didn't find out about it till it was like basically done. Right. Um, I think in that sense, there wasn't a, I guess it's to that there's no racial discrimination, but it also seems like there's a socioeconomic aspect of it. So I guess, how do you, how do we get into it if because of all of these other different um, forms of systemic and or institutionalized racism mm -hmm. or prejudice and biases that specifically in our community that people are fa facing, yeah. I don't have a lot of, I don't have any extra money. All I have, you know, I'm literally not even check to check. I'm just working multiple jobs to literally just survive. Right. What are things that you know, I guess that those those individuals can do or those families that can do? Because like, yes, you know, we don't want they don't want to continue this cycle, do mm -hmm. want to find a way to create generational wealth. Right. How do we start? Right. If I don't I'm not making, you know, whatever is considered, you know, a uh, not even an extravagant salary, but like more than livable. Like what do people, I guess, how would you encourage people to start in that position or from that position? Right. Um, I think I, I rely on key fundamentals um, of, first of all, lowering your expenses. Um, typically when people people live based on what their salary is. So that's true. And they live beyond their means. So um, even say I'm, I'm working and I'm making, you know, 40,000 or whatever, and I get a raise to 50,000. Most people will expand their living expenses to 50,000. Very true. <laughs> so that's first, first of all, uh, you know, it's about sacrifice. Um, so for me, I try very much to keep my expenses low. Um, that's not saying I don't splurge every now and again, but it's not my day-to-day -day, like lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, second of all, I think with, uh, Robin Hood, like you said, I think you've used other, um, apps like Acorn or something like that. Yeah, I've used a, I still use Acorns. Um, I want to say, I think the first one maybe a few years ago, Mint. Well, I don't know if that was stock market, but I also use Stash. Yeah. That so, was like probably my first foray into it. Right. So prior to, um, you know, it being 
you know, people like yourself and myself being able to open up a, a brokerage account online, like you used to have to have a broker and like use the telephone and go to the library right. and do research. And so it's like a very exclusive thing. Not many of our people were really right. into it, but the advent of, um, you know, E-Trade, e um, the advent of apps like like what you like to use, like Acorn and Robinhood that made trades quote unquote free um, right. <laughs> have really helped to level the playing field. Um, so when I started, I was using uh, Scott Trade and I had to pay $7 every time I made a trade. But with Robinhood coming into the game, coming onto the scene, um, they've made trading free for everyone. So it's an even like the bar is even lower for the barrier of entry is even lower. Mm -hmm. And I started like, um, I think like 10 or so years ago. Um, so keeping your expenses low, um, we, I don't know. I feel like we spend money on different things like PlayStation and, you know, trips and clothes and sneakers and stuff like that. Like if you could dedicate, you know, every month or every paycheck if you do have, you know, a little excess here and there, devote that to, to investing. I think you'd see over time that that little small um, investment that you make, like it'll grow the longer that you hold. No, I agree. And to that point, I'll say when I, even like looking at Acorns and Stash, I want to say it was either like the end of 2016, early 2017, when it was like, okay. I need to do something. Right. And it was, oh yeah, it was when I was back in school <laughs> um, full time and it was like, okay, I don't have a lot, right. but I, th I don't even remember how I ended up finding acorns or stash, but it was just like, I need to do something. But even with that, like with acorns, and if you're not familiar, acorns, it's like a roundup thing. So the equivalent of, um, you know, I think our parents used to keep, you had that coin jar. So when you broke the dollar, any change, when you got home, you put it in that jar and let it build up that way. Acorns is similar, does the roundups. And so you, I connected it to my debit card since most of the time I'm swiping instead of cash. Um, and so with that one, it was like one year, I just was like, okay, I'm not going to touch it. Whatever goes in there stays in there. Right. And it wasn't a lot. And I think at that point I was able to maybe do like $10 every month I had set up as like a recurring deposit mm -hmm. um, and did that. And I'm going to say by the end of the year with just the roundups in that $10, it was about maybe four or 500. So yeah. it was like, it's not a whole lot, but considering hey. it was <laughs> money that I didn't really think about. Right. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, if I wasn't thinking about it and I did this, right. there, I have more extra mm -hmm. than I realize. Uh, and so, like you said, I think I agree. And I know another thing that I started doing, I was doing really well with pre-pandemic. Yeah. I had started using the cash method, you know, like the cash envelope thing of even got I got a wallet that has little envelopes in it or little sections in it for your cash for the different categories um, of like planning out as I someone told me a spending plan as opposed to a budget okay I know that helped me in terms of just the mental thing but using that was something that helped me in terms of realizing you don't need all of these things that you're getting mm -hmm. and you can live without a lot of with with I can live without a lot of the extras right for convenience sake right I am definitely guilty of <laughs> doing things out of convenience right um, I think that's a side effect and or casualty of being American yes because we are very much I want what I want when I want it now and yes. I want it as quickly as possible yes so you, I, in my mind, you have mastered living within and or under your means and, but doing it, doing it in a way that is not, it doesn't look or feel that way outside. Like in terms of, but like another thing that I've always admired is your level of discipline. Mm -hmm. 
Because the other other career that she has that we haven't even touched on, I told her she's going to be like a vegan uh, or just a nutritionist and or health coach, yeah. personal trainer. That's that's one of her other lives, right? other careers. But just looking at, I guess, kind of how did you, how did you get there? Or was that a part in terms of when you were saying earlier of like, cutting expenses and making small adjustments like was that a conscious decision that you made in terms of being more of minimalism and or the healthy eating (laughs) (laughs) like how did that all how did I guess did they was it a conscious decision in terms of like okay because I want to save more I'm going to do this Mm -hmm. or was it hey I just want to make some healthier choice life choices and then it, and then they informed each other how um, did that I never thought oh, yeah. about it I never thought about them like uh cohabitating whatever you want to call it <laughs> um but they did kind of happen around the same time so I kind of did what you did where you kind of like just set aside some money and didn't think about it for me I um I opened a a bank what it was it like a CD or something mm-hmm. with Ally Bank. And I didn't have a credit card. I didn't have like a number where I could like enter it on Amazon or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I set up like direct deposit to this um, interest bearing account that was greater. It's slightly greater than like your traditional savings account. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I did that for however long it took me to have the minimum dollar amount necessary to invest in an index fund. Okay. So that's a safe bet. So I don't want you to think or anyone to think like <laughs> I just jumped in this like, you know, head first or anything because it wasn't like that. Like investing in a total stock market index fund is something that is like the risk level is not as bad as if okay. You know, we're to jump into an individual stock like a GameStop. That would be super risky. Like you could lose all your money, right? Real fast. <laughs> <laughs> but historically, we'll say the stock market has returned like ten percent um, if you hold it. So okay, I needed to have a certain amount to to buy this index fund, and I did it um, by just sending my money every paycheck to this account that I couldn't touch. Okay, so it's very much how you did it. So it was a slow start. But I would say um, I've always been a person to live below my means. Um, And I do it even more so because I've seen the benefits of it from a younger age. So I, I, you know, I, um, I've been blessed and I feel very fortunate to have some of the friends that I've had that have allowed me to live with them after, um, going to nursing school. I don't want you to get it twisted either. I wasn't (laughs) falling out of control. I was very much just needing, you know, my rent, my utilities, my food, um, with my investment, I was on Medicaid. And so I survived nursing school, but I came out with like 25,000 in loans that, you know, I had to start paying back. And, um, And the pay for new nurses isn't the greatest. (laughs) Uh, So I was very fortunate to have a friend who was like, you know, come live with me. Um, She didn't charge me crazy rent. I still kicked her, you know, a few hundred a month. And I was able to get back on my feet. And I really like the idea of um, living with friends and living with family. I think in Uh, another curse of being American is you think as soon as you turn 18 that you are ready for the world and you get kicked out of the house and kind of like meant to fend for yourself. Um, I think we fall into a lot of financial traps that way. Um, We all know that rent mortgage is our biggest expense. So if you could minimize this somehow, whether that's living with friends or living with family or living in an apartment that is below your means, I've always done that too. Um, I think that'll help you. At one point living in DC, I was paying like 1400 a month and it wasn't like I was losing money. I was very much breaking even. And I was like, I can't do this. Um, so I got a roommate and that made a huge difference for me. So I've always made sacrifices, like try and reevaluate, you know, what it is that I really want. And, uh, 
I go for that with, with, you know, full steam. Um, discipline. I don't know. It's like when I really want something like I can commit to it. So the, the whole nutrition thing, it happens <laughs> around the same time. I won't say that they're associated, but once I start seeing like results early on, then I can go for it with them. Like, yeah, this works. I feel better. I look better. Um, I feel healthier. Um, so that's how that went. <laughs> I'm for those who are listening and not watching, I'm just nodding. I've been nodding my head the whole time because it's all I've seen it. I've seen I've seen I would say I've seen the benefits of it, some of it for myself, but just in watching you and and talking in conversation with you in terms of watching over the years of like it really like is she really doing it is and I see it and I think when you said the thing you said uh, about you know, making those adjustments or sacrifices in terms of like living, I would say as Americans and even specifically within the black community, I think often it's when you get up, you know, I need, I raise you, I raise you to leave. I don't raise you to stay. And so it's this big thing of you got to get out and do and some like all the different financial things. And I can't attest I have learned from experience. I have fallen prey to, I have not even fallen prey, but I have experienced almost all of those financial pitfalls that you could have. Mm -hmm. I would say I have lived them in some way, shape or form. Um, I have students like, yes, I went to school, but I did things to where I was not I didn't rely totally on student loans, but my family, my family wasn't in a position to pay tuition. So right. I did, you know, but I got scholarships that contributed, not the, didn't pay the full ride, but it, pay, you know, was partial um, with all of my schooling, but I still have a significant amount right. of student loan debt, um, as well as, you know, I dealt with credit card debt and getting cars that I had no business getting and then constantly changing them and then the whole living arrangements um because there's I have friends who have when we left school they went back and they've been living with their parents since you know still working contributing but they've been able to because I had another friend who similar to you she decided to go back for her master's maybe shortly before we turned 30 or around that time, but she had saved up enough so that she was able to, when it was time for her to do, I think she had to do like a, an internship or practicum or something at the end. And it required her to do that full time, but she had saved enough to where she could quit her job and just focus on that and school without being concerned about, you know, how am I going to make all the bills? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something that like you said, with our generation, as we're getting older and having children, I'm, I think it's important that we're having these conversations. And so that as we start raising children, that that conversation about it's OK to stay home. Yes. Um, or even, you know, the group ep group economics mindset of and I think this is heavier in or more prevalent in other cultures, with right. cultures, specifically those who um you know, immigrant families, they come over and everybody stays yeah. together. We're going to yeah. work. We all pull our resources. Yeah. And until you're getting married or, and, or, you know, you start this business, but we like just supporting everyone. And yeah. I wish, I wish, and I hope that us as a black community can start to do that more. I feel like there's pockets where it happens, mm -hmm. but by and large, that's not how we operate. Right. Yeah. For a variety of reasons. Yes. <laughs> like there's a multitude of reasons, you know, like it's been, like you said before, you know, they don't want us to win. And there's been levels upon levels upon levels of things in terms of systems put in place that started that thinking, that crabs in a barrel mentality. Yeah. Um, that has contributed to it. And as a result, like you said, a lot of us have dug ourselves in holes that at times seem or feel <laughs> impossible to climb out of it. So, and I guess that's what prompted the question earlier of, you know, 
yes, investing sounds wonderful. I'd love to do it, but that's that's a luxury I can't afford. And it's unfortunate that it is that way, because like you said, what, just 10 years ago, if you didn't have the money to pay a broker and all that stuff, then you couldn't. But now, thanks to technology, mm-hmm. it's crazy. I feel like they used to say education was the great equalizer. Now I feel like the internet is the great yeah. equalizer yeah. because it should be free. It's not. Agreed. But, <laughs> um, but it's something that if you can get access to the internet mm-hmm. and there are apps that, like you said, are technically free um quote unquote right well i know i think acorns is like a dollar a month or something Mm -hmm. which is relatively low all things considered but um but yes i guess so you said you started with scott trade yes so i guess how did so yeah I guess if you could just how did it when you started I know you said you were having conversations Mm -hmm. um you know with your with your former boss and you guys talked about things but how did you I guess kind of what was the thing that you did or how did you start and if you don't mind sharing like how much did you start with sure um so like I said I put away money every paycheck to my allied bank account I wanted to buy an index fund that was based on the total stock market Okay. And in order, you got to pay to play. Um, they have a minimum of three thousand dollars that okay. you have to invest. So that's what I started with. Okay. Um, so you build, you save until you got yeah. to that point, and then started there. Yeah. So my okay. first um, account was with Vanguard, um, and I still have a Vanguard retirement account. But I had a separate account that I just wanted for myself, and that I used um, to live off of. <laughs> when uh when the time came for that so that's where I started okay Um, I did I did my own research I love the internet it's you know available for most of us and so many answers are out there for most of us if you really want to know you know the principles of investing it's there it's in your library for free Mm -hmm. I'm reading a book right now on the four pillars of investing I think you really have to you know, devote and, and have, um, it's like a, how do you, I don't know how you describe it, but it's like, I really, really want to win. So I'm really mm-hmm. going to devote a certain amount of time each week to, to learning how. Um, so I did a lot of research on the internet. Um, Warren Buffett is, a he's a, a person, a lot of people look to due to his success in the stock market. Um, and one of his principles is investing in companies that you know about, right. that you use, brands that you use in your everyday that you know is like a good company. Um, so I went that route with a couple of things, um, bounced off with my partner at the time, like what he was into. So we would both talk about um, just things we're into um, and just getting started there. Um, I saw Amazon when it was like $500 per share. And I was like, man, this is expensive. You know, I'm not, <laughs> right. not going to do this. And now I look at it today, it's like trading at 3000. So um, just investing in quality, um, holding my money for a long time. And uh, my big, my biggest investment was actually Netflix. And that was something I felt familiar with. Um, mm. I did what's known as value investing, which is looking at Um, a stock that's, you know, it has good standing. It's not like your lower risk, um, lower, excuse me, lower price, higher risk stocks. Um, So it was already trading like close to a hundred, more than a hundred. So I saw that the the stock price went down by like 20 or 30%. I was like, oh shoot, like, let me get in there right now. And I'll (laughs) make that money back like that 20 or 30% when it goes back up. Mm -hmm. Flash forward to today, it's, it's, um, (laughs) <laughs> 400 close to 500 yeah. percent return so um yeah I looked at that one I was like mm-hmm. <laughs> not, not there again yeah like, and I guess kind of to that point and I know I've asked you this privately but when you see those ones that it's like hey I know I use Netflix yeah. regularly um yeah. 
or an amp but it's like when you see it where maybe it dips but mm-hmm. if it's like four or five hundred my question is always like okay is having I believe having even if you can have one share that's better than nothing right um but for people where it's like hey I don't have a lot right so is it worth let me put everything into this one stock that is a higher value or maybe I can buy a few stock you know a few shares of a few different ones that are lower in value so I guess is that just more of a personal preference or is it definitely so for me um I think that's like such a great point that you bring up um my current partner um you know I talked to everyone about investing I want everyone to win but he didn't feel as comfortable investing like large sums of money he's like I you know, I really just want to keep it basic, keep it simple. So he came up with his own plan and he said he was going to invest in companies $10 and below. Okay. Quote unquote penny stocks. So these stocks are not like their methods aren't as proven. Mm -hmm. Um, These are called growth stocks. Um, So when you think about it mathematically, if you buy a stock that's $2 and it goes up, by two dollars you've made your money back but Mm -hmm. say I have this stock that's like you know five hundred dollars and it goes up in two dollars you know that's not really doing anything so um he he put I think like a thousand dollars into you know these penny stocks or what have you in March and you know when the pandemic just first started last year everything was low and he saw like great appreciation like (laughs) within the span of a year Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, like you're saying, I have one stock in Amazon and I bought it at like $1,800. I just wanted it. I saw that it was on discount. So I bought (laughs) it. It's like, I want to, Hey, (laughs) as much as, and that is where I am as much money as I have given (laughs) them. Right. I should own. And that's where I would say, I guess like my personal goal is getting to the point where even if it is just one, and I know some some sites now let you do fractional shares. Right. Um, but it's like for the things that I know that I use regularly, I need to at least say, you know, okay, some of that, a fraction of that is coming back to right. me. So for me, I was value investing only. I mm-hmm. never looked at the price. I was like looking at in terms of how much am I investing? What percentage am I going to make back? But he showed me because it, when you invest in those, you know, growth stocks that your money doubles, you know, a lot faster that this Mm -hmm. was like also a a cool way to make money. So I try and have a healthy mix of both. So yeah, I do have some that are like, you know, crazy. I, you know, I spend a lot of money on Amazon, but I do also have some that are considered growth stocks and I invest now in, um, technology, which is a very, you know, risky proposition, but um, I'm hoping, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I invest in clean energy and technology Okay. um, for my new, and I'm just going to hold on to it um, and see how it goes. Him, he invested in like Stitch Fix or something like that early and, and that joint took off. So, so it's amazing for me to see, there's always something to learn. I'm always mm-hmm. learning and I would definitely encourage everyone to, to do what feels best for them. Like look up the principles of investing, um, principles of, of, you know, financial freedom. Um, I read a lot. I listen to a lot of podcasts, um, market foolery, um, marketplace, um, I have a subscription for uh, The Economist, Um, really just trying to stay abreast of what's going on in the world, what's going on in different markets and trying to take advantage there. Um, I am trying to get into real estate now. Um, I think that's also a great way to build wealth um, by, uh, you know, buying property and, you know, having people pay down your mortgage, pay your taxes, um, of course, rendering good service. Don't be a slumlord. <laughs> Please don't be a slumlord. I, mm. We've all experienced them. And, and you know, that's not what you would want. So right. but it's a it's a great way. I, I hope everybody, the younger generation has at least one property 
by the time they retire. Um, that generates money, not only for them, but for future generation as well. I agree. There's, and I'm happy you mentioned some of the podcasts that you listen to and things, because I was going to say, you know, what are some resources yeah. that you would suggest? So you mentioned the principles of investing, mm-hmm. um, the economist, mm-hmm. uh, my, what, what were the podcasts? Yeah, so I have a subscription for Motley Fool. Okay, I've I've seen and read some stuff from Motley Fool. So they give me ideas. I don't necessarily base like what I buy on what I read, but they they help me to think about things I wouldn't consider before. So mm-hmm. they have a, a free podcast called Market Foolery where they okay. analyze different stocks. Um, you know, with each episode, have different people come and give their insight. I listen to um, the Bigger Pockets podcast. That's my real estate kind of go to. Okay. Um, they're really geared towards, um, you know, everyone on the spectrum, whether you're an experienced real estate investor or a newbie like myself. Um, they have a lot of inspirational, you know, people who've succeeded and they really do a great job in inspiring you to, to keep going. Even okay, though those are you know, Great. I, I said, I've seen some of the free stuff from Motley Fool. Yeah. Um, I have, I stop shy every time they say, do you want to subscribe? <laughs> um, but no, I'm definitely going to, like I said, I feel like I've been in this very slow progression of getting my feet wet and learning different things. But I, like last year I did open an ally account so that I could have that set amount of money go here before I get a chance to see you (laughs) and it just stays there um uh and and because it's like hey I want to especially I had started before but especially with the pandemic you know hitting it was like emergency fund (laughs) granted the whole three months thing you know it's been a year so that threw that out the window but it was like okay I want to I want and need to have one um, because I want to get to the point of where I do have a, a an actual savings and not just two or three hundred that I put and yeah. then something happens, which is better to have it than going to credit cards. But um, those are things that I would say, like for me in this in the last couple of years, I've been getting more intentional I'll right. Say, right. about my spending habits, um, getting away from making decisions solely based on convenience. Mm -hmm. Because yes, I've done a lot (laughs) for (laughs) that. And I have paid the price and I'm still paying the price in some respects um, from a financial standpoint. But I think this conversation or conversations like these are invaluable. Um, because like I said, you and I have had several about it and I'm sure we will continue. Uh, are you open to, you know, so let's say for someone listening, they're like, I want to learn more. Or I want to do this. Are you open to having conversations with people? Like, is this something? And I'm kind of planning another side career for you <laughs> of kind of financial coaching or advising Um of or is this is it I know like you said you're you have the conversation with friends and family but is this something that if people who are listening would would you be open or receptive to having additional conversations with people or and not because what I'm not out here trying to do is promote you doing stuff for free for everybody your time is valuable your knowledge and resources are valuable and I get the the goal and desire to help people but just even if it's a matter of Matter of fact, better yet, scratch all that. I will write down, I'll make sure like all of the stuff that you shared in terms of the resources. Yeah. I'll be sure to link that in the show notes. Okay. Um, and so that way people can have access to some of the tools and resources that you shared that you use mm-hmm. as a starting point. Because as you shared and that I've learned is we definitely have to take the time to educate ourselves Mm -hmm. and as you mentioned this is not something that just happens overnight no you have it may take some time to save up a certain amount to like okay now I have this 
this, you know, this lump sum or this nest egg amount that I can then go and play with because something you shared and I've heard in different classes or articles is you have, it has to be money that you're okay with losing or like that you're not, that you don't need because you need to be able to put it away, like, or you know, put it out there and not miss it or not worry about it. And so it it could be, like I said, for me, it was, okay, let me get, let me start with these little small roundup amounts. And then, you know, I took that, the money that had been saved. Okay. I can now take this and create this other account and then start adding to it. Um, Or like with Robin Hood, when I started, I was like, I have a hundred. Let me put this here. So I was kind of like your partner of, yeah, what's under $10? How can I maximize (laughs) this 100? Because I don't have a lot to play with. So let me start there. Um, And there are, there's surprisingly a lot of stocks that I saw that are under 10 or even under five that you can get to to start with. Um, So I feel like there's still so many things that we didn't cover or that we could, but I do want to thank you thank you for sharing your experiences, your story, um, and just for being, for, first of all, for being you and for having the, I don't even say discipline, like this, I think discipline is a part of it, but in terms of what you were saying earlier, I think it's a passion that mm-hmm. you have for being your best self Mm -hmm. and then also helping other people be their best selves right um and so I think that is what fuels the discipline for you and then like I said being able to just watch I'm like "Hmm, she is really out here doing it okay it's like but I'm a little slow (laughs) <laughs> on the, a little slow on the uptake with some of it, but I'm getting there. Yeah, every everything on your own time. Um, I love that you kind of talked about your strategy as well. Um, we all have different life experiences. We have, you know, different advantages, and I just hope everyone, you know, kind of does some introspect introspection. Yes, looking to see where they have those advantages. Looking to see, you know you know, what kind of opportunities they can capitalize on to build, build their wealth. Um, I would, I love talking about it. I'm obviously passionate about um, us coming up as a people. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out in the future. I don't (laughs) think I will be a a financial advisor professionally, but um, I, I, I hope we can talk about different ways that we can, you know, help others um, attain some financial freedom. Um, So it was a pleasure being on. This is my first real podcast. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, yes. I'm going to just say it's the first of many. (laughs) Whether it's here, you know, you're always welcome here. Because like I said, there's so many other things that I think in terms of just what you're doing aside from this that I'm like, everyone needs to know about (laughs) it. Um, But like I said, thank you. I appreciate it. And for those listening, I guess I... I go back to, you said you initially just, I I guess, tangible things that we could do of if you're listening and you're like, yeah, okay, whatever, investing. I can't do that. I can't afford it. Like before you're so quick to just say I can't, or that's not for me, that's for other people. I think if nothing else, like Chanel said, take some time for introspection and actually look at your bank statements. Mm -hmm. Um, I took a class with someone, um, that we had on the podcast the beginning of 2020 talking about financial um, freedom, just kind of goal planning. And one of the things when I took one of her, I did a small group with her. One of the first things she had us do was print out three months worth of bank statements and then go through and kind of write out what you spent on everything in the categories and then total it all up. And it was like, oh, I thought I was... I thought I was doing good. And then I looked and it's like, oh, wait, you have more, you have more than you realize. Right. So I would say for those listening, if you feel like, hey, I just don't, I can't do it. I don't have it. Take the time. Now, I'm not going to lie. It hurts. 
It does. It hurts, even if you don't print it out, but just going through, because like I know with my bank, I can list, I can create categories of what each thing is, and then it'll kind of create a graph of it. I think it's better if you do do it by hand, even if you don't print it, but just writing it out and then actually adding it up to see the mm-hmm. like, Oh, right. hmm. I didn't think that I did that much, but I would say that's something that you could do. Um, like she was saying, look at cutting your expenses. What are some things that, Hey, I don't have to pay for share all these different subscriptions and streaming right. services. Right. right. Like they allow for three and four profiles. Like, so we don't all have to have our own, right. um, just different things, look at different things like that, that I think would be ways to, to minimize expenses. And as with, I guess, pretty much everything, you got to start somewhere. And right. so even if you, you can't actually start buying stocks or investing um, in that respect today or within, a, you know, this year, you could open a CD or a, even just a savings account, like a separate savings account where you put the money. Like I said, Acorns is something that I used or still use, and it's just there. And it's, it's slow, but it accumulates right. over time, even right. just off of roundups. And I think even Cash App now has mm-hmm. some kind of option for investing. So Cash App and PayPal. PayPal. Yeah. So it's like we, those are areas or things that we use regularly anyway. So just start somewhere. And I know that it feels, oh, it can feel overwhelming and daunting. And it's just like, there's so much, I don't know what, but just start somewhere, pick something and read a little bit about it every day. You could sign up for news alerts. I want to say CNBC is another, I don't know how big they are in terms of like stock advice, but I know I've heard of them or I see articles from them. But just like I said, start somewhere and remember that this too is also a part of a process of a journey. Um, Chanel, you shared some of yours with us today. And so start somewhere, focus on the learning, the process of it, and not so much on the end goal, because I'm Mm -hmm can guarantee that if you just focus on a little bit every day of learning something every day that before you know it, you will look up and you've saved three or 4,000 to put in and buy that index fund or buy one of them big stocks so we can say (laughs) you buy an Amazon. (laughs) Thank you. Right. Thank you for that little bit of money. Thank you. (laughs) But that's what we agree. So and that could just seeds. be me. <laughs> nah, sowing seeds um, and you reap what you sow. So have faith, have fun and watch it grow. Watch us come up. There you, there you have it. So thank you for listening. And until next time, y'all just do it. 